My first experience with the topic that I'm going to be discussing about today took place when I was in third grade when I first moved to India. The subject seemed far from reality since all of the countries I lived in had adequate learning environments and women's rights. However, it soon became a reality when my family and I were being driven through the streets of New Delhi. When we came to a stop on the road, suddenly, girls were begging and tapping on the sides of the car. There in the middle of the night, on the cement road covered completely with dust, young girls were holding a large basket of Indian candy, hoping someone would buy some of it. I was shocked and afraid of the girls who looked younger than me. And there I was, sitting in an air-conditioned and bulletproof car. My name is Jiu Choi, and I'm here to fight for those girls' right to education. The girls who were selling candy was the start of all of it for me. In fourth grade, I read a book named I, Malala, and I instantly thought of Malala Yousafzai's story when I started writing this talk. In case you didn't know, Malala was born in Mingora, Pakistan. Most people wouldn't have celebrated the birth of a baby girl in this region, but her parents were delighted and gave her the same opportunities they would give to a boy. She grew up to love school, but then something terrible happened to her village and her community. The, ter um, the cruel, aggressive, and violent radical group named the Taliban took over the entire Swat Valley. They were dictating the region and banning several things and harshly punishing those who disobeyed their rules. Of course, Malala was triggered by the one by the one ban which is placed over girls' right to education. As a result, she started to blog about the life under the control of the Taliban in 2008 when she was just 11 and made public speeches about girls' right to education. The Taliban got word and tried to kill Malala. However, her story did not end. She has made a miraculous recovery and her voice as an activist has only gotten louder. She continues to work for every girl in the world who deserves an education. Education is education. We should learn everything first and then choose which path to follow. Education is neither Eastern nor Western, it is human. A quote from Malali Subsai. There are many more girls like Malala who can't go to school. The top five countries where girls can't go to school are mostly in Africa. South Sudan, Niger, Afghanistan, and Chad. Factors such as poverty, health issues, inadequate environment for education, wrong gender perceptions cause girls not to have the opportunity to go to school. About 16 million girls worldwide might never set foot in a classroom, and two-thirds of the world's 758 million illiterate adults are currently women. Though mind-blowing, this isn't the last thought I want to leave you with. What I want to say is that there is a solution to this conflict, even though it seems nearly impossible. Like Malala, we can help solve this conflict and place girls in a safe and encouraging environment. Funds and peacemakers are helping to bring education to all kids worldwide, and you can actually help them too. Um, Girl-friendly schools, Women teachers and role models for girls in school are all necessities in these conflict areas. You can be courageous and even donate or research about the topic. Blog about it, speak about it, and post your ideas, but never keep your voice down for what's right, because remember, education is neither Eastern nor Western, it is human. Thank you.